Hello. Well, <clears throat> it would seem that I'm live. I think the game is too loud, but at least you can hear it. All right, so I just got this PC and I'm kind of in a spot where I think I like it. 
Um, but I'm not 100% sure if it is exactly where I want it to be. Um, so we'll see. Uh, we'll see what happens here. I know I have nobody watching this right now, uh, but I am curious. Uh, so far, I've had zero dropped frames. A uh, pretty high bitrate too, 6,500 bitrate. So we'll see. Uh, oh. Oh shoot, I got somebody watching the stream. What's up, nerd? You should jump into the comments too. I can see the comments as they pop up here. Uh, let's see, just do this here. I'll put my stats on the left. That way I can see all the messages as they come in. All right, well, shout out to Jordan for being a real G and watching the live stream. So, uh, anyways, uh, I got a new PC. It is gorgeous, um, except when I got it from CyberPower, the graphics card, there he is, Jordan. Graphics card came DOA, dead on arrival. Um, it worked for like 15 minutes. And then when I was doing like the final setup, it just died. And I, <laughs> I took a half day off of work for PT. I took PTO just to like dedicate time to set it up. And it crashed, it, like it wouldn't work anyway. So that was frustrating. So I sent it back. Thankfully there's a full warranty situation, sent it back. Uh, yes, you should. You should get a gaming PC and infuriate your wife. Emily will love it, especially if you get a gaming PC and then you get games that can also be enjoyed by her. I know Kaylee uh, enjoys playing Forza on here with me. Um, we do a few like city management games like Civ or uh, yesterday we tried... Um, What was it? Uh, City Skylines. We tried City Skylines, and that was pretty fun. Um, and then there's this one game called House Flipper uh, that Kaylee really likes. Uh, it was like one of the top games, but it's also one of the... I don't know. You can tell they made it in a hurry, but it's still very uh, intriguing. Anyways, yes, you should absolutely get a game PC. Well... I have never won a game of Civ, ever, so I am going to start a new game, and I'm going to see if I can um, figure it out. I've never played the... From the first stirrings of life beneath water, to the great beasts of the Stone Age. Wait, hold on a second. Did I not get to choose my... Uh... You have come far. I don't think now I got to choose my greatest quest from this early cradle of civilization on towards Hold on. I don't think this is what I wanted to do. Oh, Gathering Storm. Okay, I guess. World Congress. Wait. Civ 6 Gathering Storm. Okay, yeah. So, I played the regular Civ. I haven't <laughs> dedicated wham. Uh like okay, actually if you want to go through this, let's let's go through this. Cuz I am I am all for it. So I'm gonna pull up my browser actually. Uh, and we're gonna go through how to, uh, what you should look for in a, in a PC. So let me just hit X. What's going on here? I'm just gonna quit the game real quick. All right, so I got mine from CyberPower PC. Uh, if you want a really nice PC, just 
off the top, you probably want to stick to AMD situations and you want uh, at least eight gigs of RAM. Um, so for these, this would be a good one. <laughs> the 3050. This would be a good one, actually. A really nice entry starting point. The 3050 is a graphics card that just came out. Um, and it is like the, the bottom end, but it'll allow you to play most games on a like a medium setting uh, these days. Um, so with the 3050, and it looks like it has 16 gigs of RAM, a terabyte hard drive, oh, a terabyte SSD actually, that's nice, and then you've got an i7-11700, fantastic, fantastic, all of these are pre-built, so you order one, uh, and you can customize it, so say, one of the most common things that's customized is the case, so say I really don't like the case, so you can change the case. Um, so my PC came in a NZXT 510i. Uh, which is right here. But I got it in black. And it's sitting under my desk right now. Um, but a lot of people, like, you know, you can go crazy. The CyberCube imitates the uh, the Omen HP PCs, uh, but Lian Li cases are super good. NZXT H510 is like classic. It's just what everybody has and it's really good. Um, you, you honestly couldn't go wrong with any of these. Uh, just all about what you like, what you think would look good. But yeah, all of these are pre-built. So you go through and you choose the base one. And then you go and you're like, hmm, I don't want this case. So you choose a different case. And then you can also get it laser engraved uh, on the side. Um, you can do custom things or you can do one of these. One of these things here. <sighs> um, you can add extra fans. So replace the default ones with RGB ones if you want. Change your processor. But honestly, like for like beginners you don't really need to change any of this um i personally would go with at least a 3060 ti and that's the only thing that i would upgrade everything else here is is honestly pretty good uh the 3050 is gonna be your biggest bottleneck um everything else though i would i would sign off on as being a totally acceptable pc and then of course you'd want a monitor too um, for the 3060 Ti, you'd want to stay in 1080p, so you uh, probably would go with this one. Uh, that's five milliseconds. This isn't bad, actually. 24 inch, 75. Yeah, actually, this one wouldn't be bad either. It's just it's a sale right now. So, say you got all of my uh, suggestions, which would be to change the, the, the case and to change the video card. So, I would change the case, and I would probably go with at least, like, um, uh, something with front glass, too. So, probably this Lian Lee front and then uh, also change the the video card from the 3050 to the 3060 Ti for an extra $325. And you're looking at $1,900. Uh, and you'll be getting pretty good uh, FPS. So, yeah, PC versus console, when console is so much more affordable, cost of entry, people want... Um, with PC, you are getting, um, like, not only are you getting a, a a gaming system, but you're also getting a very powerful PC, which opens the doors to things like video editing and photo editing, opens the doors to uh, 3D 
rendering, um, you uh, the music production. Um, you also have the ability to, uh, you know, yeah, the age old debate. You have the ability to plug in a um, a uh, VR headset um, if you choose to go that route. Um, but the the uh, it, it's just a bigger possibility, bigger tray of possibilities. And also, you get more games with the with the PC. And on top of that, um, you can emulate older games. Um, I think you can even emulate up to PS3. Games, PS3 emulator. Yeah, RP, RPCS3. Um, and any, uh, I think, uh, I don't know about Xbox games because Xbox has a lot of their games. With, uh, with Xbox, you can actually stream your console games to your PC um, like uh, without needing a console. Um, so if you... Uh, want to play a game that's only on Xbox and it's available here you can you can do it without a, a console so it's it's just like you have so much more available but yeah cost is definitely prohibitive but I would posit that with my last PC it lasted me seven years almost before I felt the need to actually move up those seven years also included a lot of development and coding school projects um, video editing, photo editing. Uh, I, I was basically anything I could, I anything I wanted to do, I could throw at it, and it, it would do it. So uh, that is that is my say. But if you just want a gaming situation, Switch is great, Xbox is great, PS5 is great. Um, you you don't need to do anything. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, graphics is one thing that just blows everything out of the water. And I would love to show you uh, my my good graphics, except my graphics card is, is not in yet. So <laughs> that means I've got uh, I've got a killer processor, 32 gigs of RAM, and uh, a not great GPU so um, I don't know it is um, it's all about cost analysis figuring out what it is that you want to do versus what you can afford for me it was super easy because first of all like I'm in tech and so I, I know that I want to be able to keep up with the things that are happening in, in the tech world um, but uh, I can totally understand how somebody would be having an issue with cost um, because it is it is not cheap um, it's definitely an investment uh, so um, yeah anyways I would uh, I, I would recommend at least think about it because the Switch does a lot of really cool things, um, but it will always be outstripped by even a PS, a PlayStation, or a, or a, a, or an Xbox, just because um, what percent wise of upgrade. Okay, so I actually can give you solid numbers about that. Let me pull up. There's this there's this website that allows me to compare my old stuff to my new stuff. So let me pull that up here, and I will show you what I have. So just a second here. Uh, uh, uh. doing something for Kaylee right now. Sorry. Switch is perfect for the amount of gaming I do. Plus, getting to take it on a plane or the car is sick. I would agree with you. Um, 
I would agree with you that it is, uh, it, it's all about what is best for what you need right now. Uh, if you don't need a bajillion dollar um, situation, then you don't need it. And it would be a waste of money uh, to have it and then realize, oh, I'm not, I'm not using this. So um, I, I totally understand that. So let me just send this file over to Kane. All right, so let's go to All right. Uh, can this go? So it's called userbenchmark.com. So on the right is my old GPU and technically my current GPU this is my graphics processing unit. This is what um, gives the computer the power to render complicated and high level uh, graphics. Um, so uh, my old GPU uh, it was released in 2016. Actually, when I first built my computer back in 2014, or yeah, 2014, uh, I didn't have a graphics card. I just used the integrated graphics. Uh, so it was um, pretty interesting. But uh, eventually I upgraded. Uh, I had a 750, uh, GT 750, and then I upgraded to this, and that was the last thing I upgraded. Um, so the 3070 Ti is what I have, and if we want to look at just percent, wise effective speed there's your percentage 444 uh, percent better uh, just uh, effective speed the ability to render 3d uh, stuff uh, 444 percent better for looking at uh, lighting effects 530 percent better reflection handling 425 percent multi-rendering 562 percent and body calculations 370 percent it's the as a particle system um, that they use to test this. Uh, I'm not going to overclock it, so this isn't as important for me um, because I didn't overclock my old one, but you know, you're getting that too. Um, the 1050 Ti is more dominant in market share, so there are more people that own a 1050 Ti versus a 3070, but that doesn't mean a whole lot. But you are getting a much better value, and that is uh, uh, you know, price to performance. Um, most more recent, of course, texture detail, complex splatting, texture, um, a parallax texture detail. Um, it is uh, quite crazy how much better this is. So, um, yeah. <laughs> so that's just my graphics card. Okay. And uh, my graphics card was great, it served me well. And it's still serving its purpose because this is currently what's in my machine while I'm waiting for the other one. Um, but it's uh, the new one is going to be wild. So let's look at my old processor, which was an i5-4690 non-K, which means it wasn't unlocked to be overclocked. And uh, versus my current one, which is an i7-12700K. So the i5-4690 um, came out in 2014. This is It was brand new when I built this PC. Um, so it was top of the line. Versus the i7-12700K, if we're looking at just effective speed, we're looking at a 49% increase um, because the base clock, uh, we're getting a 5.1 turbo, 5.1 gigahertz versus a 3.9 gigahertz average. Um, I mean, 88% faster in single core, 89 in dual core, 97 in quad core, 275% faster in octa core. And that's mainly because I have these efficiency cores as well. So if you look here, uh, I don't think it shows efficiency cores here, but it does show them in hardware monitor. Um, so I have these main cores and then I have efficiency cores. Yeah, so I have 
performance cores and efficiency cores. So there's a total of 20 cores on this versus a total of eight. Uh, four? Eight. Eight on this. Yep, four cores, four threads. So this has 12 cores, 20 threads. Much, much better. Uh, if we look at RAM, I don't know what my old RAM was. It was like... I don't know what my old RAM was. Hopefully Jordan is back. But I had a 16 gig kit. It was like a crucial... Crucial uh, 2x8 gig, I think that's what I had. Except mine was DDR3. Yeah. 2x4 gig. No. Um, it won't show DDR3. DDR3 2x8 gig. I guess. Oh, here we go. No. 2x8 gig. All right, you ready for some sieve? All right. Let me go to the sieve screen. Thirty-five degrees. Ooh, toasty. What's the weather like? Right here. What's the weather like? It's currently 19 degrees. High is 21 and low is 9 today. So, anyways. Uh, this game is all about... Uh, think of it as like Settlers of Catan, except with more mechanics. It's a basically a digital board game. Um, so... Do single player, uh, create game. We'll do the Gathering Storm expansion. I'll start as. I have lots of options here as who to start as. Um. Hmm. <laughs> That's so cool. You can be the Cree Nation. I think I'm gonna start as Teddy Roosevelt. Or should I start as... Yeah, sure. We'll start as Teddy Roosevelt. Rough Rider. And we'll do standard game speed. We'll do continents. That's fine. And then we'll do... Standard size map. So we won't do apocalypse mode. Which does uh, natural disasters. Adds them to the game. We won't do barbarian clans. Um... Uh, we won't do ages. We'll, uh, we'll just do a standard game. Alright, we'll just do a standard game. Just leave it by itself. It's all narrated by Sean Bean. I don't know how well you can hear the music. Of life beneath water. To the great beasts of the Stone Age. To man taking his first upright steps, you have come far. Now begins your greatest quest. From this early cradle of civilization on towards the stars. Welcome to Civ 6 Gathering Storm. This guide will introduce you to the new expansion. Okay. The World Congress. So. You do proposals. Resolutions affect all civilizations, such as banning a luxury resource or gaining extra amenities from each copy. Discussions. Members can send this. Okay. Cool. Uh, what else? Diplomatic favor is a new form of currency. Can be earned through alliances. Uh, to extract promises. Okay, cool. Uh, gather diplomatic victory points to pursue the new diplomatic victory. Be the first to accumulate the target number. All right. Uh, warmongering system has been represent, replaced with a new representation of how other players view your warlike actions, grievances. Okay, okay. Uh, in Civ 6, the environment around you is more alive than ever. Floods, storms, volcanoes can pillage or destroy your improvements and districts. 
Okay. Blizzards, dust storms, tornadoes, hurricanes, flooded rivers. Okay. Cool. Volcanoes, high risk, high reward. Okay. Okay. Geothermal fissures. Okay. Um, the power. Strategic. So power. Hmm. Your choices will affect the world's temperature. Interesting. Burning fuel heats up the atmosphere. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, I don't know. All right. Actually, I'm like in a perfect place. As your personal advisor, I am qualified to assist you in all matters related to ruling our civilization. Oh. I am at your service. I am dropping frames. <laughs> this is so bad. Uh, options. Uh, graphics. Let's, uh... Sink. Uh, so let me just turn it to uh, okay, confirm. Let's see if that will help. Okay. I think that's a little better. How long until tech is improving so fast that equipment will come? Um, so right now, um, the level of improvement of tech has actually slowed down. Um, the the old value, which is the old thought, which is uh, that tech will improve every two years or something like that, or every... Uh, Yeah, it's it, it's not um, it's not speeding up. It's not you're not getting as much um, as before. Uh, so right now, tech is becoming obsolete. I would say if you buy something right now, you're probably good for at least four years before you are looking for an upgrade but fully obsolete you won't be fully like right now my machine won't be fully obsolete for at least five years maybe six years and that's like bare minimum i would say so anyways uh i feel like i'm in a pretty good spot i've got ocean i've got river i've got mountain uh i'm gonna save the places right next to the mountain so that I can, um, so that I can uh, put universities and stuff there. I'm gonna found a city right here, uh, right on the coast. And my warrior, how about you, go explore, and we'll start researching. Um, let's research mining first since I have a copper mine right next to me and then we'll do uh, sailing and uh, yeah we'll do mining first and then one of these so we'll, we'll doing that choose a production let's uh, get me a scout and we'll go so this tells you kind of where we are in the era. And we found a little village. Awesome. If you visit them, this they'll give you things. Which means it has flooded before and might burst its banks again. A flood along this river could Okay, okay. Our civilization has accomplished something historic, worthy of being celebrated and remembered. Okay. Well, that's fine. Um uh, Builder, 
Oh, sweet. What should we build first? I don't even know. Um, let's go here, and uh, we have to wait until the next turn. So I got a plus one era score. We got little barbarian scouts that are villagers. Desert Island, you can only take um, one game. Only one game. Probably Skyrim. Uh, and I say that because you can mod the heck out of Skyrim. Uh, so I would... Uh, I think that's what I would do. Um, okay, no drop frames currently. Uh, Skyrim, you can just literally do anything with them. I think we got to put ours to sleep because I don't think they can do anything until we discover mining. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, probably Skyrim. Uh, probably uh, with with as many mods as possible. Yeah. Otherwise, it would be a game like this or City Skylines or something that has uh, a lot of replayability just due to um, the random nature of it. Yeah, you can't do anything right now, can you? We're just going to put these boyos to sleep until we uh, figure something out. So, we got a little, little barbarian situation. Chihuahuan Desert. Hey. Don't take my... Don't take my builders. Did we find another village? Or did we discover somebody? Nice. Okay. Builder, you can go to sleep. Scout. Go explore. You guys can come back. Thank you for your service. Oh, actually, no. Hold on. We gotta go to this. Uh, 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 uh. We'll get another settler, or should we do something else? Um, yeah, let's get another settler. Alright. Scout's exploring. I'm gonna come and claim Samarkand. Samarkand. Who deserves more credit than the wife of a coal mine? All right. Now you can go here, and now we can build a mine. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, so we have mining. Uh, I am boosted for sailing, but uh, I do want to harvest bonus resources. So I'm going to go with pottery next. And uh, we'll go from there. Awesome, we got an extra 40 gold. Samar Samarkand. Okay. Uh, Samarkand, so they're a city-state. Okay. Alright, you boys can come back and defend your home. And we'll go to the next turn. Ooh, Jade. We gotta get onto that. Let's get a mine. Nice, nice. Another scout barbarian. Hopefully we find this scout stronghold next. Um, and I can move them again. Nice. We'll go here and we'll build a quarry. And there are the bad guys. Cool. Barbarians. Looks like Samarkand is getting bodied by some barbarians here. Oh. Oh. My warriors are also getting bodied by something. What happened? The Potomac River has flooded. Oh, my guys got hit by the Potomac River. Zero units killed, but four tiles gained fertility. Uh, I've got an envoy at Venice. Uh, and inspiration for early empire. Cool. All right, you boys need to come home. Because you guys are about to die. Can we run away? Let's run away. Alright, let's build a quarry. 
And let's hope that I don't get attacked by these barbarians. Alright, I can do a government now. It is not wisdom, but authority that makes a law. Nice. So we're gonna do plus five combat, and we're gonna do plus one faith and plus one gold. Because we're just starting our first government here. And for civic, we are going to do trade routes. I think we're going to start with foreign trade and get some trade routes going early. And you need orders. Wow, you can still do stuff? That's awesome. Um, unfortunately, I think I am... Can I move you here? I can't. Not yet. Your turn for right now, because I definitely want to use you guys later. 